Estás viendo Canal América, Televisión Dominicana para el Mundo. A Time for True Show is sponsored by the office of Dr. Bernard Fiokoff, a periodontal, dental implant and laser specialist in New York City, for over 40 years. Dr. Fiokoff was honored by the International College of Dentists and Pierre Fauchard and received the Presidential Lifetime Humanitarian Honor from the White House. Call us at 718-229-3838. Sometimes life can be so damn hard You don't know where to go Everything keeps falling apart yeah. You try to do your best But only God knows that you Given everything you've got But the world takes you down You just keep moving on at your feet. Welcome to a Time for True show. I'm your host, Dr. Bernard Fialkov, and it's a pleasure to be back with you again today. And tonight we have a very special guest, someone who's giving back to the community, but not just in the last year or two, most of his life. And uh, something that it, when you look at, one of the simplicities of life, but simplicities are very powerful. You know, if you talk to the greatest athletes in the world, what they do is very simple, but it's very powerful, and that's how they become champions. So today, We're very honored all the way from Chicago, Illinois, to have Reverend Fellows, the Chief Operating Officer and co-founder of Books Over Balls. And there you see Magic Johnson at one of his events. Uh, there you go. And there's Reverend for you to see. He's been a prominent force in the Chicago metropolitan area for more than three decades. Mr. Fellows was raised in the Chatham neighborhood on Chicago's South Side. On his way to play basketball at the Chatham YMCA, when he was a young man, he would often pass the neighborhood drug dealers. But back then, even the drug dealers still had heart and they encouraged him to stay away from drugs and focus on his sports and his education. The 54-year-old former Chicago street ball basketball legend went on to earn a bachelor's degree in physical education and health from Aurora University, and since has devoted much of his life to mentoring youth in poor neighborhoods. He helped start Book Over Balls, a nonprofit organization that mentors Chicago's youth and stresses education over violence. He has dedicated his career to community empowerment, being an advocate for the underserved families of seniors, adults, teens, ex-offenders, and single parents. Mr. Fellow's extensive community activism includes vice chairman of the National Black Agenda Consortium, family-focused Lawndale program coordinator for 15 years, director of Mission Men Father Support Group for 10 years, director of research and community outreach of National Block Club University, a club of 250 block clubs, former NCA Division III assistant men's basketball coach at Aurora University, Chamber of Commerce advisory board member, employment planning co-author of Blacks to Work State Government. And the list goes on and on and on. So I had to cut it short because we wouldn't have enough time for all he's done. It's amazing. And engineer, if we can, I'd like to welcome live Mr. Revan Fellows to a Time for Truth show. 
and bid him a warm welcome all the way from Chicago, Illinois. Let's bring him up on the screen, Victor. There you go. How are you doing? Man, this, my new phrase this year is called Blacknificent. Well, there you go. And I'm just doing you know? great in Chicago. And uh, I just first want to thank uh, Brother Bobby Zaro Hunter, who's became a good friend of mine in the last few months, and I'm introducing you, me to you. And uh, as he always, he's like me, he's a connector, but he always brings genuine people to connect. So we connect. He came to Chicago and did a tour and look at some of the vibes for Vinnings. And so he's an athlete, and I'm an athlete. And so I'm just honored to be here, man. And thank you guys for considering me to be on your show, Doc. I've heard a lot of great things about the work you're doing. It's very seldom that you see businessmen like yourself. Uh, they do, but you never can see it. So uh, I see you, you're out there, and the show makes a difference. And most of those who are given don't have a show. But thank you for all that you do and committed to helping the collaboration with our community. And thank you so much from Chicago. I uh, appreciate you. Well, you know what? Uh, I'm happy to have you on the show. I've always thought that Chicago was a very strong city. And that, you know, when you have very strong people, sometimes things happen. I know with my wife, we got a lot of love. So it's a strong bond. But woo! And I know you know this. When there's a strong bond, baby, can there be an earthquake? <laughs> yes, sir. So I wanted to just give acknowledgement to the few things you said, because you said quite a bit. Number one, I agree with you about Globetrotter Robert Hunter. The guy is like an ambassador for life. He doesn't stop. He's non nonstop, goes everywhere, does everything. And, you know, I agree with you totally. And then the other thing I wanted to address to you, you know, is why I do this. And, you know, I was born in Cuba. And, uh, you know, I'm a white Jewish guy. And when I grew up, when I was a little boy, my best friend Sam was an African-American guy. And he and I got along well. And I've never seen anything but people in front of me. I don't see that they're Catholic or they're Mohammedan or they're Hindu. I just know they all bleed red and they all got to breathe. And, you know, they all like to have love and they want to do good in basketball. <laughs> so, you know what? I, 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 just, I just feel that what you do, what Mr. Hunter does, what we all do is important. We got to get back in our country to being real people and to appreciating you know, like an example, what Chicago does for New York and what New York does yes. for Los Angeles. And if we didn't have this great country, I don't know any family who doesn't have fights inside of it. So if we can't even have a family who doesn't fight. We got to wake up and we got to realize that if we got a country, there's going to be some fights when we have strong people trying to work for freedom. But this show is about you. So let's talk about you. But you got me going. That's why I wanted you on the show. And this is appropriate, and I, I see why I wanted you to have on the show. So I want to ask you first, because your life has been really a, an example for people to follow. What were your dreams when you were a young guy? Well, it's interesting that you would ask that. And uh, so my name is Ruben. I have to find out what language, is, but it's actually an African name. It means leader. R-E-V-I-N, so not reverend, don't give me them titles, that's a lot of bird to wait to carry for pastors, but it's pronounced Reven Fellows, and I didn't find out until I was about 26 years old, I was at a conference in Chicago at the Bismarck Hotel where they had major convention years ago with my mentor, Reverend Dr. Charles Smith, and we were sharing with him who I was, my name, and he said, brother, do you know what your name means? That means leadership. So once I heard that and uh i've been captain of a player on every team i played since i was in fifth grade so it was really surprising to me my organizing ability to everyone being the shortest the skinniest the smallest and being that everyone wanted to choose me to be the leader so it was then that was later i found out that i was living what was put on upon me 
and it's my spirit. So I'm mean, there's any room I can go in, I take it over, and not, not to be, uh, you know, that's just that I'm a people person. So with that, basketball has allowed me to go when I joined basketball to really give me a very shy brother. I got two off the Eagles. I'm shy. But basketball put me in a space of self-esteem, confidence, rules, regulation. People think basketball is just rolled out there. But you have to call timeouts. You have to say foul, shoot one and one. You have to be on the basketball court all day. And we follow rules. Court. So Books Over Balls, that I'm a co-founder of, is the concept. If you can train, which I ran along Rainbow Beach, I'm living in Ricky Green, who's a, who's a role model for me at six o'clock in the morning with weights in my pocket at 100 degrees and i became the fastest man but training but those things basketball bring in relationship that really builds and so books over ball is a program to just track young men to come into a fold once they get there then we find out and assess them i'm a former educator and i'm a former uh, uh community organizer and i work for family folk of Lundell 15 years team pregnancy gangster so all those things allow me to be able to go into a house of seven and give it some hope and then let me take the child and run with them. And so they trust me and I'm going to do what I, whatever, whatever made me to be successful, present them young men that they can see fathers and role models because we don't have a lot of black men in front of these young people. So I put them in. I've never been to jail and I've been incarcerated, no guns. And my cousin who was in gangs made sure that I didn't get in. But the concept is, let's put every different man in front of these young people. Who do you want to be? You want to be me or my brother did 13 years in metal for a crime he didn't do. So I'm just being a servant, and uh, and that's just my space, man. I love it, networking and putting people together. I live and strive for that every day, just connect and help our people. And black people specifically, but everybody. Because I had the pleasure of being in South Suburb. So Latinos and everybody, everybody know me as I'm helpful, but I'm new to our people are in a real bit of trouble. So I want to thank you for having me. I hope that wasn't long-winded. No, no, no. You know what? That was right to the point. I always get accused for being long-winded, but I, I, I tell you what, you're not long-winded. People need to pay more attention to you. And uh, you have a lot, of, a lot of wisdom. I want to ask you something. I want to be real here. Here you are, a young guy. You're a street ball legend. You're taking down the basketball court. So I want to ask you something, because there's guys who are going to watch this show, young people, young men, women, and they're going to maybe be looking at doing some things that are going to get them into trouble. So I want to ask you, because you grew up in Chicago. You didn't grow up in some kind of middle of the farmland where there's nothing going on. You grew up in a tough place. Here you are, a star. What kept you focused? and away from all the negativity. How did that happen? Well, man, there was a healthy village to raise a child. Everybody talk about a village. If it's unhealthy, it don't work. We've always had crime in Chicago. Probably when I grew up, it was the worst. But we have some love, respect, and confidence by our people. And we really had a relationship with God the most high. Somewhere some underhanded hands came into play with drugs being infiltrated in our community and then take away family values. And then if you lock up all the men in the village with the industrial uh, progress uh, technology and then moving factories to steel mill in Chicago, you create a void of black men. But I was blessed to have at least eight black men. Now my household with uncles and all that, but even with that, I was blessed to have coaches, uh, Coach Bob Hammer, the number one coach retired, the winners coach in, Chicago Simeon High School, which I'm a graduate of. I proudly had coached Lonnie Hampton and close Gil Walker. So I had men all around to make sure after I left the house when I was going to do something sneaky and get in trouble, the word, the message. So uh, my cousin, who was second in charge to one of the top gangs in Chicago or street organizations, we call it, night gang. And uh, he told me, and he took me to baseball, skating, basketball, and said, okay, so. You better not have your mother call me and you doing gangs and drugs and get caught up. I'm going to kill you. I said, wow. But I'm here to tell you that message rendered. I've never been incarcerated, no drugs, no gangs. 
and scared straight works works good because I know that he could possibly in the love and desire that I want you to make it. And that transcended to the community where all the drug dealers and prostitutes and gang bangers and where I live, uh, go ahead, brother, you got to go and make it for us. So they pushed me outside of my house. It's called a healthy village. The village become unhealthy because of lack of black men and resources, but I thank God for my mother, my grandmother, and I always usually introduce myself as Geraldine's son because uh, my mom is integrity. So my daddy will hurt somebody every now and then, so I stay on there so I can be a peaceful man. Well, you know, it makes a lot of sense what you're saying. And, um, you know, it, it, I see why you're doing what you're doing. Is that why you established Books Over Balls? Well, this is a real interesting situation. Fernando Vincent, our CEO, and Brother Al Rayford and, and Darren Powell. But I met Fernando some years ago, maybe 15 years ago. And interesting, he doesn't play basketball, but he, like yourself and Bobby and, the, and other people, he did the read. What's about this sport that's so phenomenal that draw black men to it and draw people to look at it? So him not being a basketball player and researching it, he found out this ball is bring universal unity. He's, and he found if you put a basketball court in the middle of the desert and nobody's there, in the next half hour, they'll be running a whole court basketball in the same. So there was a young lady that I knew that he knew that brought us Mary, Mary Moore, uh, uh, Gypsy, uh, is a good friend, brought us together and we talked. So he told me about this research he did, and he had a plan that he wanted to give to my mentor, Coach Gil Walker, who was the founder of Midnight Basketball, that people don't know, that during the Biden administration, uh, when they was voting about the crime bill, they brought him on board to look at it. So he went to speak at the White House about uh, crime, and so he was given the privilege to create Midnight Basketball in CHA housing in Chicago and become a consultant all over where there was crime was down 10 years using basketball as a tool. He actually raised me from Chatham, where I grew up, that you mentioned early. And him and other coaches where I played ball, they ruled with an iron thumb, but gave me an opportunity to use basketball to create my self-esteem and confidence. And so books over ball is a concept that uh, I took Fernando. They had been looking for him to meet him. And he was in retirement. He came back and said, if y'all can do this, that, and the other, I'll help you. So we put 200, 300 black boys in a gym on Saturdays every other week with no government funding, feeding them and bringing scouts. And then Magic Johnson ended up coming to an area where I grew up in uh, South Shore and connected with him, with Henry English, who's one of our elders. And we connected with Will Polite. He was heading that in. We recruited 150 students of the 300 Magic, and we used my basketball. But what was unique with Magic did was he wanted to support the children that from seventh to eighth grade all the way to high school that dropped out, didn't care, don't want to be, and put a program with computers, wraparound service, social emotions, and I would have got them, and we, they could, Magic Johnson graduated a bunch of youth from here. One of my students that do video, his name is Haven Crawford III, he got a scholarship, and, uh, and he, he was our videographer, but what was unique, Magic picked him to speak, uh, you know, the group picked him to speak about Magic, and he made Magic Johnson in the intro speak, introduction speak cry for 15 minutes and broke him down. And he said, man, this young man is powerful. So he said that, uh, young man, that I want you to lead this program, and when you graduate, I'll give you a full ride scholarship to Morehouse College. And uh, so he ended up another year later graduated, and Magic signed a full ride scholarship for him to go to Morehouse College in honor of representations of books on the ball. That is beautiful. You know what? That's what it's all about because, you know, I think sometimes people forget that when you make it, you know, there's a reason you made it. It wasn't just that you did it on your own. Obviously, you had to work hard and strive for it, but there are a lot of people who support really everyone. I don't think there's anyone out there who's made it who wasn't supported, family, wife, husband, girlfriend, boyfriend, mm -hmm. whatever it is, sex has nothing to do with it, 
you know, it doesn't matter whether it's male or female. So what you're saying makes a lot of sense. Uh, I wanted to ask you, because I know you got some programs that you run. What is this Chicago Youth Rise Up program? Fernando, he's a master market. So the, our staff, most of them, Al Rayford and Fernando and Brother Darren, they actually don't play, haven't played basketball other than recreation. So uh, when me and Fernando met, uh, God bless, he was looking for my mentor. So I'm a graduate of Simeon High School where people, uh, they can Google Ben Wilson, the 3030 in, in uh, ESPN, where he was the top junior player in the country, uh, uh, 17 years old, that never touched the, never played in college and high school, and he was uh, killed going to, at a lunch, going outside at a lunch with his girlfriend to a store next door. And so I had the pleasure of raising Ben Wilson in terms of looking up to me and Don Brandon in, at Simeon. And, and so the point being that they, he and others looked up to me. So we've just been providing role model skills. But at the end of the day, uh, the whole Simeon High School, we, we, we have our best baseball coach, Hall of Famer, uh, Franklin, and then Al Scott, rest in peace, football Hall of Famer, and Coach Bob Hamburg. Hall of Fame, rest in peace. They're the winningest coaches in Chicago with discipline, and it was not basketball, sports first, academics. So uh, I wanted to mimic that, what saved my life. So I went out to, I graduated from Royal University. So when Ben Wilson got killed, I came back to get my brother, who was a freshman, who was doing well now. We're 10 years apart. I'm 63, 53. But one of the things is, uh, the spirits say, hey, I was going to Sweden to sign a full ride. Uh, 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 go there and sign a contract and get the car and the condo because I hurt myself my senior year, but that's another story. But I continued to get my degree at a junior college, Olive Harvey Junior College. Played two years there, went on to Rory University, get played two years, and uh, we was a winning team in the nation. Uh, when Ben got shot, I decided not to pursue my pro career and got my brother. I raised him, he's doing well. So, Books Over Balls is a concept of giving back and being a representation of black men coming back to the community so that our young men can see men. And, and my philosophy is don't tell a young black man, to, as you know, the stereotype, his pants are down. Don't tell another black man to pull his pants up until you put your pants on. you got a great philosophy because you lead by example. And I can feel as we're doing this interview you know, the, the real care, not the make-believe care or the, or the surface or marketing or, you know, in today's world, everything's about social media, smiling pictures and everybody taking pictures and pictures of themselves and stories about that they went out to get their hair done. <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> it, it's a pleasure to speak to a real person. You know, um, I want to ask you a question because you just said something and I think it's something that the whole country could gain from. Here you had this career that you could pursue and you decided to help your community, which is amazing. Uh, you kind of said it, but what message would you like to give our country in terms of like what you did not to tell them what to do, but to share what you felt. Well, I think that the message I would give is having resources and access for young black males and young black girls. Systemic racism is live in America. We've been deprived of all the respect of the building this country 400 years of slavery for free, and we were not invited here. We were kidnapped, brought here. Ellis Island, the original, had a black woman that came in shackles to show the shame of America in this situation here in New York at Ellis Island. They came here with a God. They came here with the spiritual, their religious, and other things. They had potlucks, and while that was happening, we had they had kidnapped a brother, my ancestors, and my brothers and sisters from Africa who came here jumping off slave ships, die before I, so we're the best. 
But when we got here, we were building New York. All the high, 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 big buildings in New York were built by brothers that was captive and brought here from from Africa to be enslaved. And why people at Ellis Island, they were being potluck and fascinated to come here. So when people say, why black people don't come up? Well, we were invited here to do work. And so you can look at, check the record that all the buildings they're finding bodies under the tower, tall buildings that uh, our, our brothers that was enslaved captive their bones from helping build and being here in America. So uh, we are loyal, patriotic. Uh, I don't know if you know, but I'm a co-founder of the African American Heritage Museum and Black Veterans Archive founded by the Reverend Dr. Charles Smith, who was 82 years old. And I met when I was a graduate from Aurora University in 1985. I met him and he's a, he has an environmental artist where he does uh, art on our culture and the 7,246 African-American men and women fought that in Vietnam. So I met him, that everybody said he was a crazy man in Aurora. So I met him and he told me, so I quit my school teaching job and joined him to really empower my people because I said something's wrong. So it's a long history thing, but I always say there's a lot of people that saved my life and uh, I give so so it be it would be treason not to come back home as a black man and be in the belly of violence and other things. And I know it's not fair. I had eight black men, and these young brothers don't see a black man maybe one or two years, and man don't need a pair of pants. Well, you you know, uh, I really appreciate everything you said and uh, for the viewers out there I think it's important to listen to your words and to really look in your hearts and let's start moving forward like our guest tonight has talked about and look up books over balls and see how you can help to support his group uh, he's a great guy and I look forward to seeing you February 9th and 10th in New York City when we're at the United Nations and the day before we have that game, that Basque Harlem Globetrotter Celebrity Game. And uh, it's been yes, a pleasure sir. to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Well, I hope, uh, thank you and Bobby, and uh, I hope I didn't disappoint you with the information presentation, but this is not a job for me. It's passion for me. As you see, I have on my shirt. I don't have my books on ball shirt on. I have please put down the guns campaign. So we have a campaign in Chicago that addresses please put down the guns. And we are out in the community going at young men. So all the negativity you see on the news and call it Chirac. It's called Chirac. Well, you, know, you, you, you know what? You know what? That's <laughs> why I'm, I'm happy we had you on the show because you're a, a, a real human being of heart and a leader. We'll have you on again, I know, in the future. I look forward to working with you. Unfortunately, we ran out of time, but it's been a beautiful okay. show. And for those of you watching, let's follow his example. Let's give back to who helped us to begin with. Let's not forget where we yes. came from, like he said. And let's make this country what it should be and at least work towards that goal. Thank you so much. And for all of you watching the show, have a very good night. This show was sponsored by A Time for Truth Foundation Incorporated as a community service. Sometimes life can be so damn hard. You don't know where to go. Everything keeps falling apart. Try to do your best, but only God knows that you've given everything you've got, but the world takes you down. You just keep moving on, let your feet.